I had a request in the comments to do a layers video. I'm pretty thrilled to do this video because I really like talking about gear. So I'm wearing my base layer already. This is the Rab Pulse hoodie. It breathes very well. It's not scratchy on the skin like others. And it's very hard wearing for what it is. I've had this for a couple years, probably got over a thousand miles on it and it continues to work great. It does have some small pinholes here in the bottom and that's to be expected. I'm just gonna continue to wearing it until it's absolutely thrashed. I do have another one, but this one still works. Not only is this gonna be a layers video, but it's also gonna be kind of a tips and tricks video of how to work your layers. The next layer at this point would be considered a mid layer. Typically my next layer is the Rab Borealis, which a lot of you already knew that was coming, but this jacket is an extremely hard wearing jacket. It's extremely breathable when you're super active and that's why I like it so much. I don't get much retained sweat with this jacket and if any, it's usually in my lower back from my backpack just resting against it. It's really easy to vent this jacket if you don't want to stop and take it off. You have these two chest pockets which act as vents. They have a mesh here, which is great. Right under this mesh is my base layer. So this is a fantastic vent. And also you can zip the jacket down. We're venting a lot of heat right now. That's why I love this jacket so much. It's lightweight. It has a really close fitting hood, but I also wear this hood over a helmet because it's very stretchy and it does not cause me pain. Uh, some hoods that are tight will push down on your helmet and they can give you a headache. And if you're not paying attention, it will come on quick and it can really ruin your day. Rad Borealis, phenomenal mid-layer. I think it's the best jacket Rab's ever made. All right, let's move on. So a lot of the times, this will be my only mid-layer. It just depends on the temps. Another option from Rab, if you wanted something slightly warmer than this, the Rab VR Alpine jacket. Now this jacket has a bit of a fleece line, which is very comfortable on the skin. Plus you get what feels like immediate, immediate warmth as soon as you put it on. It really resembles a fleece, which is very nice. People like fleece jackets. They are immediately warm on the skin, whereas something like a true soft shell may be cold until your body heat warms it up. This seems like it would be much heavier than the Borealis, but it only is two ounces heavier for quite a bit more warmth. I was using it quite a bit, and then I realized I am very active in the mountains. I tend to move pretty quickly, do most of my ascents in single days, and so I really don't need extremely warm mid layers. I usually bring a bomber parka just in case and for breaks, but when I'm on the move, I tend to opt for a lighter weight kit. The easiest way to stay warm in the mountains is to wear the most minimal amount of gear possible. You don't want to sweat. Sweat will make you very cold. And so if you begin sweating, you need to delay her immediately. As soon as you stop, if your body's covered in sweat, you'll be freezing. If you encounter an injury or some kind of reason where you have to dig in and you can't be on the move, and you're sweaty, you're gonna be really cold and it takes a long time for your sweat to dissipate when you're in that kind of an environment with that cold weather. You'll often find me wearing this only even as low as zero degrees, as long as I am on the move. And sometimes this is too much for me. I'll take this off, I'll only wear my base layer, put my hood on or a beanie since I don't have hair, and I'll just cruise up like that and I won't sweat and I won't be cold. All right. Moving on from the Borealis, if I decided to carry another mid-layer, it would absolutely be the Rab k -On. And this is a down jacket that weighs in at four ounces. Now on very cold days, or days maybe where I'm with a group, or I'm with people who aren't as fast, um, sometimes I'll wear both these jackets together. The Rab k -On is great for active pursuits. It has no down in the armpit area, and so it vents a lot of heat that way. It is extremely light and doesn't have any pockets. I love one that at least has pockets, just so I can maybe shove my hands in here and stay warm for a quick break. 
you know, a minute or two where maybe I don't want to pull out my parka and put it on. Or if I'm just waiting for the group to catch up, shove my hands in my pockets. But this jacket doesn't have pockets. There are other jackets like this that do. I might invest in one of those jackets. Typically, these are the only mid layers I carry. I've been known to do Rainier in single days where with this K-On being my warmest layer I have. Of course, I would carry a hard shell as well to protect against wind, but multiple times this has been my warmest jacket. And I'm really skating a thin line right there. This is not enough to realistically survive for days out there if an emergency happened. I have enough experience where I could probably survive a night even if it was below zero with this jacket because I know where to go on the mountain, where to seek shelter. Trust me, I'd be inside my backpack. <laughs> All right, so there is another jacket that I do want to talk about. So this is from the same series as the Alpine VR or Vaporize, but this is the VR Summit that has dirt on the zipper here. So ignore that. This jacket is very warm. It has a true fleece line on the interior of the jacket. As you can see, this jacket is incredible. It is very light and I had the I had the Rav Alpha fleece slash soft shell. This is also fleece lined and I wanted to use this, but I've only used it once because of the weight. And then they released this and it's basically identical. I feel as if it's just as warm, but it is so much lighter. And so I pretty much retired this. I wear it around the house and on cold days, but this is a very good active pursuit. Uh, insulated soft shell, if you will. Um, but I really don't bring this out unless it's like minus 10 degrees. Okay. Let's move on to parkas and depending on what I'm doing or where I'm going, I will touch on the lightweight stuff and move up. The Rab Microlite, which is probably Rab's most famous down. This is kind of the answer to everything Pacific Northwest. It's really what I should be bringing instead of this or maybe on top of this just as a just in case layer. It is a very warm jacket. People love this jacket. You'll see this thing everywhere and I really, really like it. I went without it for a long time and I recently just bought one last year actually. And it's a really good jacket. It's light. It's also a very good looking jacket for casual use, it's not huge. And so you'll see me using this quite a bit. I will definitely have this on Denali just as probably the jacket I use most of the time. Um, because most of the time when you're moving, the sun's up and you're actually not wearing your huge parkas. They are still a just in case jacket even on Denali. Okay, the Rad Neutrino Pro. Now this jacket is really a flagship jacket in the category. You'll see this talked about on a lot of forums. I've actually seen this jacket on Denali before. I don't recommend it. Um, it's fantastic for lower 48 stuff. It's a perfect Rainier jacket in summertime. And it really is just a bomber jacket that offers a ton of warmth. I have another one over here. This is what I would consider a 4,000 meter plus jacket. It would be really great in Ecuador too, over 4,000 meters because the temps there are not that bad. They're actually similar to what you might find on Rainier. This is perfect for almost everybody. This is definitely the jacket I would recommend almost everybody buy. If you want a future proof and you're on a budget, I probably would actually opt for the jacket I'm about to show you, but the Rab Neutrino is awesome. It's bomber. The Rab Positron Pro. Now this jacket I love. I would consider this a 6,000 meter jacket. And this is what I'm going to have on Denali. I kind of bounce back and forth between bringing this and Rab's Expedition 7,000 meter jacket. The 7,000 meter jacket is quite a bit heavier and I have tons of other jackets and I wouldn't be able to not bring those jackets if I brought the 7,000 meter jacket because there'd be times when I wouldn't want to wear the 7,000 meter jacket, but I would want to wear those jackets, if that makes sense. 
So this jacket is a true 6,000 meter jacket. It's extremely warm. The weight difference between this and the Neutrino is not much. So if you want a future proof, if you have plans of Denali, this jacket is perfectly at home on Rainier. So you can definitely use this. You're not gonna be too hot and you can definitely use it on Denali as well. Sometimes, since I'm such an ounce counter, I don't bring this. And last week on Mount Hood, I brought my Neutrino Pro and it was cold and I was fine, but I definitely wished I had this. So I highly recommend this jacket. It is incredible. Biggest thing I want you guys to understand is that if it's super cold outside and you are getting after it, you need to make sure you are de-layering. Do not be confused by the cold temps outside. The body creates so much heat. You really should be cruising in just your first mid layer or even your base layer. And of course, this will fluctuate a little bit based on everybody's personal temperatures, but it is huge. You do not want to be cold out there. This is the kit that's going to keep you warm if you use it properly. But if you were sweating and you stopped and put this on, you're going to be cold. These downs require body heat to heat up. As soon as you put this jacket on, you will not be immediately warm. So you need to account for that. So I should talk about pants too. So for pants, I typically use the Rab Torque or the Rab Torque VR or the Rab Incline pants. The Rab Torque is a lightweight soft shell pant. It has a drawstring at the waist, which I really don't like. It has crampon patches and it is a very hard wearing pant. The Rab Incline is basically the Torque pant, which with belt loops, which I much prefer the belt loops, but it doesn't have crampon patches. Other than that, they're pretty much the same material, same weight, same warmth. The Rab Torque VR is an insulated pant that is kind of a mid-weight soft shell. It's fleece lined on the inside. The Rab Torque pants, I pretty much wear for everything because it's such a hard wearing pant. I've had them for about five years and they still look brand new. I'll wear those pants anywhere from 15 degrees and above. Anything below 25 or so degrees, I'll probably throw a really thin base layer underneath. The same thing goes for the Rab Incline. The Rab Torque VR, 20 degrees and below, I'll switch to those. And under zero degrees, I will put on a base layer on those. Those are really warm pants though. Now, if I'm going to be bushwhacking a lot, I might switch to the Kinetic Alpine pants because they are waterproof. And if you're going through a lot of that, wet dew in the morning, it sucks to wet through on your legs. Now, here's another tip. I tend to pre-plan my break. So typically five or so minutes before my break, I will actually put my heavy gloves on. I'll put my beanie on. I'll start prepping for that because a lot of times your heavy gloves, if you've got them, you know, hanging on your harness or something, or if you've got them hanging on your hip belt on your backpack or what have you, they're gonna be cold and it's gonna require body heat to warm them up. So if you stop and you shove your hands into these freezing cold mittens or whatever, 8,000 meter mitts, it doesn't mean that you're gonna be warm. So you need to make sure that they're warm prior to your break. Okay, that has been my primary layering system. I hope you guys got something out of this video and if you did, consider supporting me by hitting the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.